Well, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to cover geofencing and um, unlocking zones on your DJI drone. Now, it's not the most exciting subject, but it is a um, quite an important one, depending on where you like flying your drone. If you just like being over the sea or out in the hills and the fields, not a problem. But sometimes, certainly in some of the more urban areas, we come across uh, geofenced problems. Now, the obvious ones are like airports and airstrips and prisons and army barracks and stuff like that. And obviously, the people that live there or work there don't want you flying in those areas. So that makes perfect sense to me. But there are some areas where it's more of a, it's more of a check where it says, do you really need to fly here or do you really want to fly here? And sometimes the answer is yes. But just to keep every man and his dog out of these zones, so they've uh, put this invisible electronic fence around it. And with your DJI drone being quite a smart piece of equipment, it gets to this invisible wall and says, hang on a minute, I can't go through this wall here, so I'll have to stop. Now, I first found out about this a few years back when a friend of mine had his um, Phantom, and uh, I had the original Mavic Pro. And we took off from this area, and he went whizzing off straight away over this uh, building, and... For some reason, mine just wouldn't go forward, and I had no idea um, what was happening. I thought there was a problem with the drone, but it was only afterwards when I came back and did a bit of research that I found out uh, what the problem was. So, let's get into it. Now, DJI, in their wisdom, lovely DJI people, not affiliated to them, not yet anyway, <laughs> if only. Um, now, they've come up with this system, and... Um, Basically, put a map, a website together called Fly Safe. So, if you just type in Fly Safe on Google, then you'll see what's what. And it comes up and it just tells you that it's uh, committed to helping pilots unleash their creativity safely and responsibly. So, you can have a read through there, but if you click on, scroll down and click on GeoZone Map, it will bring up a map. So, it tells you all about you putting your type of drone that you've got there. And uh, there's the map. So if we scroll through it, I'll look at uh, some of these different uh, zones. You'll see one here, the um, Uniball Stadium in Bolton. So we'll click on that, and it says University of Bolton Stadium level authorization zone type stadium. The reason this has been included is because um, part of the drone code or the existing rules are one of them is that you can't fly over crowds. So if you can imagine on a on a good day at Bolton Mondras, you can have like 18, 20,000 people all packed into that stadium. Now, granted, it's got a roof on it, but there's people coming and going, and they are in a confined area, so they cannot easily escape. So I think, having looked around the map at various other football stadiums, pretty much any proper stadium in the country has a little blue zone around it. But it's not a problem. So we'll just whiz through here, see what comes up next. By default, GEO limits flights into or taking off within zones that raise safety or security concerns. If a flight within one of these locations has been authorised, GEO allows users with verified DJ accounts to temporarily unlock or self-authorise their flight. This unlock function is not available for sensitive national security locations. So we'll scroll down here and here are the different zones. So I read restricted zones. In these zones, which appear red in the DJI app, users will be prompted with a warning and flight is prevented. If you believe you have the authorization to operate in a restricted zone, please contact FlySafe at DJI or online unlocking. Now, I did a, a wedding last year that was within a zone for a nuclear facility. Um, I won't go into the full details of how to do it, but in a nutshell, if you've got a good enough or a valid reason to be in there, and you can explain or demonstrate that you can operate safely within that zone. If you contact the CAA, fill out one of their pro formas, and then they will decide whether or not you're allowed in there. And if they say yes, they'll send you back some codes and stuff, and uh, you can unlock that zone between a set time. I mean, I asked for an hour's window on a set date, and um, it was absolutely, it went like clockwork, no problem at all. A couple of phone calls on the day, just out of courtesy, and uh, it all went well. So grey ones, altitude zones will appear in grey on the map. I found this in Blackpool uh, when I was up at Stanley Park. Now, what happened there was because I was outside of the airport zone, but I was still close to it, I keep 
inverted me commas today. Um, so rather than being allowed 120 metres, it only allowed me up to 50 metres. And again, you can work around in 50 metres. If you need to be there and you need to get something done, then if it's a choice of nothing or 50 metres, you make 50 metres work, don't you? So no problem there. Then the blue ones. Authorisation zones. In these zones, which appear blue in the app, users will be prompted with a warning and flight is limited by default. Zones may be unlocked by authorised users using a DJI verified account. Now, this is the one we'll cover today. The yellow warning zones, uh, which may not necessarily appear on the app, users will be prompted with a warning message. Class E airspace. We don't worry about Class E airspace. We don't worry about Class D airspace because we only got 220 meters. But these yellow ones are generally around things like schools and stuff. So again, it's just making you think, do I need to film here? Or if I do film here, is someone likely going to come up to me and say, hey, what are you doing? So yeah, it's just, it just basically makes you think about it. So I think they're a great thing. Enhanced warning zones in orange. These zones you'll be prompted by Geo at the time of flight to unlock the zone using the same steps as the blue one. But you do not require a verified account or an internet connection at the time of your flight. Now, I've not seen any of these orange ones at the moment, but I'm sure as we'll go through, uh, we'll find. Uh, the pale blue res regulatory restricted zones. Due to local regs and policies, flights are prohibited within the scope of some special areas. Prisons. So yeah, there's no reason why you should be flying over a prison because everyone in the prison, all the guards and stuff, will be panicking, thinking you're dropping off bad stuff over the wall. So yeah, stay well away from prisons. Operate at the side, out of the geo zone if you need to, but yeah, no overflying. And green areas, recommended flight. Well, that's basically everywhere else. Okay. So here, you log in, put your details in. I'll obviously cover my details up because you get your own put your name, uh, email and password in and click the login now when you've logged in you get this page here that says unlock request complete re complete required information on the background information page before applying to unlock click on authentication application very wordy that isn't it complete required information on the background information page and use the authentication application okay so here you get to choose whether you've got a personal account an organization or a government account you click down to your region I'm in the United Kingdom personal account and then you pop your details in here again I'll just block them out so you need to put an email address and your mobile phone number in um, or it could even be a landline but yeah stick your mobile phone in so that it can ring you if there's a problem and uh, put industry type so there you go you verify thing it'll send you a text message with a six or seven digit code I think it was once that comes through on your phone off you pop now again it's easier to do this in in the office or at home on your computer rather than trying to fiddle about with it outside but I can't I will show you how to do it outside as well on the bounce so put your code in submission successful so background certification, you need to put all this in. Unlock request, so these are my historic ones. Again, I've fuzzed them out because it's not for you to see. New unlock request. So you read through all this. Basically saying that, you know, it's up to you whether you do it or not and you are responsible if something goes wrong. So custom unlocking or zone unlocking. So we'll pick zone unlocking for this one. Put your details in again. Now here you need to enter your serial number from the flight controller now to do this so select your device enter the serial number from your controller you can find that in the settings in the about section type it in there put your model model in device name if you've got a name for your drone i haven't so i'll just put not applicable and press confirm now once it does that operation complete device added to list in device management and there's your basic information so fill in there your device and the one you've already just entered the uh, and put your serial number in put your name in there so enter your email again pilot added to list in pilot management so I'll stick your details in there and then zone unlocking so now just scroll through the map to the area where you want to fly let's zoom in there we go middle brook click on the zone there 
select the day you want to unlock it and the reason i'll put 21st of june and then click on submit operation complete submission successful click on view and there it comes custom unlocking email address your drone details the date is valid to uh, where you can fly and accepted click on the view button and you get a quick summary of the mission or the perspective mission it'll even give you a little map underneath show you what's been covered so it shows you the zone it says unlock by altitude 500 meters i'm not sure what that is but uh, 120 meters is my operating height so i won't be going above that and uh, there you go easy peasy so that's just a quick wordy demonstration of how to uh, unlock your drone for uh, an authorization zone from your computer or laptop subscribe and i'll show you on the next video or in a future video how to unlock it in the field just by uh, clicking a few buttons on the drone's controller okay so if you've got any questions about this or uh, if you've managed to unlock a few zones let me know downstairs in the comments and uh, that'd be great to hear all about what you've been up to with your drones so yeah loads more videos coming about the mini 3 pro so thanks for watching see you again cheers bye